and the origin of all of this world and its dissolution as well. Shri Krishna says in this verse that all creatures in this world are born from these two natures, Bada, higher nature consciousness, and Abhara, lower natures and, and matter. Everything you see is born from either Bada, higher nature and consciousness, and Abhara, lower nature and matter. When matter and consciousness combine, then you get this world. There's nothing in the world that can ex cannot exist uh, can exist uh, not exist as a result of these two. Everything you see exists because of these two. Shikusha says that he is the origin of this complete world and its dissolution as well. Every religion says that God created this world, but this is the uniqueness of India Shis that that which dissolves the world is also God. Apart from that, if you study all the other religions, they call the person who gives birth God, and they call also the person who maintains the world God but they created completely different circumstances about how the world gets dissolved. They say that evil people destroy the world such as the devil or Iblis. They have created completely different circumstances. Over here, Shukran says that he is the origin of this complete world and its dissolution as well. This is a very beautiful concept. If you try to look at it logically, then if God is all-powerful, then his absolute power can only be demonstrated if he is able to both create and destroy. Otherwise, his absolute power cannot be demonstrated. If something can create but not destroy it, then how can he be all-powerful? If you know how to turn on a machine, but you do not know how to turn it off, or if you know how to press the accelerator pedal of a car, but not the brake pedal, then, uh, and then you do not have all power over the machine or the car. If God is all-powerful, then the dissolution of the world must remain in his hands. If God is all-powerful, then it's because of this reason. He is a creator and a destroyer. That is, Dissolution, uh, dissolution. The Sanskrit word of dissolution is prabhav, and its definition is prakushte nabhava prabhava. The Sanskrit word for creation, creation is pralay, and its definition is prakushte naraha pralaya. Prakarash means beautiful, and it's used in both these definitions of creation and dissolution. So it means that dissolution is also beautiful. We all believe that God gives us birth, but we get surprised when it says that God also dissolves everything in the world. This is a very beautiful concept. Great saints give an example. There are people who fear the thought of mortuaries. When one travels down a road um, to get from one place to another, and as soon as that there's a cemetery mortuary coming up, um, then as soon as that comes, people don't get that side of the road and just look at the other side. They look at the left hand side to see whether the train has come. What have they got to do with whether the train comes? This is because on the other side there is a mortuary. People do not look there. People have to go there and there is no escape from going there. The word mortuaries and the thought of mortuaries are regarded as impure, but they are not impure because God says in this verse that he dissolves us. A five-year-old boy had been told one evening by his mother to go and play in a compound. The boy told his mother that he won't, doesn't want to go to the compound. The mother told the boy to go to the compound because the other boys were also playing there and so this child could play with them. The boy told his mother that he didn't want to go to there because the evening had come, it was getting dark and a dead body may come in a compound and take him away. The grandfather sitting in the house heard that his five-year-old grandson was scared of going into the compound because a dead body may take him. The grandfather thought that if a child thought like this, then it's wrong. The grandfather told the boy that he would go with him. The grandfather said he would sit in the compound and see who would take this boy away. The small child had a fear of dead bodies, but because his grandfather was coming with him, his fear went away. The grandfather came with his foldable chair, sat in the compound and was reading his newspaper. The grandfather would then look around to see nobody was there. Now this five-year-old boy was at peace and had no worries because he knew his grandfather was there and that if a dead body came, then a grandfather would be there to protect him. There was peace. In the same way, are we not all dead bodies? During the evening of our lives, we have to go to the mortuary and we fear this. We fear this a lot. At that moment, our grandfather, Shivji, is sitting there. There is a temple of Shivji in every mortuary. He is sitting there and telling us our entire lives not to fear going there because he is sitting there to look after you. This is necessary. That is why we have the Holy Trinity of Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh. God has been split into three roles. God, G-O-D, Generator, Operator, Destroyer. Brahma creates, Vishnu maintains, and Shivji destroys. I would say, well, I said dissolves. There is no enmity between the three of them. There is harmony between the three of them. Out of stupidity, people have said that there is an enmity between them, but there is no enmity between the three of them. This is because only one job is to be done. Shivji is sitting there. In the definition of Palai, dissolution in Sanskrit, it is said that dissolution is beautiful. 
The reason why it's beautiful is that one goes back to God rather than being destroyed. Death is beautiful. Who said that death is wrong? We hear that a lot of people get sad when someone dies uh, and we even know that we've got, uh, we, we do not have experience of this. Death is not a sad experience because every person that died and comes back has said that it's a great experience. There's a book that I've not read that uh, looked at the first few pages when he was traveling and a person gave it to him. In a rest, research has been done of people that had near-death experiences. These are people that were medically declared dead but became alive in 10 minutes, 50 minutes or one hour. Such people were asked what was going through their minds when the doctors had given certificates to confirm that they were medically dead and when they came back after those experiences of death. There is not one person who said that he was sad at that time. If a person was sad at the time of death, then this is because they must have remembered their past karmas, but not as a result of death itself. People can be sad because of regrets at the time of death, but not because of pain or because of going away. But all of us say that so many times that death is bad, death is sad, because this is the information we have been given and not the wisdom. This is not the sadness of experience. And if someone says it, then we hear it and also begin to say it. Some people talk about the sadness of birth, but who has experienced this? I didn't experience this. Who experienced this? Great states say that just like there is no sadness in birth, there is no sadness in death. People say that those who are born are in pain. Who has this experience of pain at their birth? This pain also does not happen at the time of death. The reason for this is because death is beautiful. Buddhist philosophy says that there is a sorrow throughout one's whole life. But in the Vedas it is said, Anand Ayam Jagat, this world is full of bliss. And there is a completely different perspective of looking at it. That is why in the Buddhist religion, when one dies, then it is called Nirvana, bliss. Buddha attained Maha Nirvana, the ultimate bliss. The feelings are beautiful, but when Vedic Dharma and the Gita, what we, Vedic Dharma and Gita say is that Brahma Nirvana Muchati, a person does not die, but he becomes one with Brahman. This has not put the word Maha in front of Nirvana, this has put the word Brahman, the Supreme Soul, in front of Nirvana, meaning that the person has become one with Brahman, one God. That is why death joins us with the Supreme Soul. Guruji often says that Karbuji has given us a very famous doho. Nale dole shusaka thale vaase nahi aahe kale shinga chatura beli sajan ke gachana hai. He's saying that dying is like going to one's beloved's house. One has to prepare for this by bathing and getting ready. When a girl is going to her in-law's house after wedding, then there are tears in her eyes, but she's happy in her heart. Both these feelings are 100% simultaneous and true. These opposite feelings come to her at the same time. There are tears in her eyes because she's leaving her family in a house where she grew up all these years with love. She has to leave behind the people who she has strong relationships and feelings for, but in her heart she's happy because she's going to be with her husband. In the same way, if there is one sadness when one is approaching death, then it's because one has to leave all the things that they have gathered. At the same time, there is happiness because one is going to be one with the Supreme Soul. Only those girls or boys that have lived pure lives can have that happiness in hearts when getting married. But those girls and boys that have lived wrong lives will never be happy. Instead, they will have this fear inside that they're thinking, what if they find out about me? In the same way, those that have lived their lives purely and beautifully are never afraid at the time of death. And those who have lived their lives wrongly will always be afraid at the time of death. And a soul would not even want to leave their body. They are dying and the souls will not want to leave because they are scared of going to the new bodies. There can be no sadness at the time of death and God says in this verse that he is both the creation and the dissolution. That is why God says, Loka vatu dila ke volume. Death is not a bad thing. Life is a game and when one instrument stops working then you get another instrument. If a cricketer is batting and his bat breaks then he gets another bat. If the ball wears out then they play with a new ball. In the same way, the game of life is being played and if a toy is broken, then it doesn't matter because the new toys are ready. God says that he is disillusioned. Verse 7. Last verse of 